blessed Sabbath to all of you. I'm very, very thrilled and blessed to be in your midst through this online service. Thank you, Pastor Sunny Tan and the church elders and church board, church family of Penang English Seventh Avenue Church for giving me this opportunity to share the words of God. And now that we're living in this unprecedented time, I believe there is unprecedented success that will accompany God's church in the last days. Why do you say church? Do you believe that? I say that confidently, not because of what our church can do, but I believe that God will step in and he will continue to intervene in this great commission, this grand salvation in our generation. I believe that the work of saving souls, this evangelistic efforts, personal or public, will be more united than ever. And the church will continue to bear fruits and results. If we continue to fulfill truly what God says in the Great Commission. Now, let, let, us, let us start by asking ourselves how much we truly have, have fulfilled the Great Commission in our churches, in our life, in our personal, in our, I mean, do we treat evangelism as a lifestyle? Do we really invest our time on it? Really, how much does evangelism worth in our daily priorities? Now, if we take that in a personal level, that remains a challenge in our hearts. As a church, do we really spend more time in our church board agenda? Or perhaps the longest spoken item in our church board are not about evangelism. If you're looking to this dire reality, we can see the implications, we can see the applications, we can see what's happening on the field in our churches. It's perhaps because we are not faithful to this call. And so this message, this sermon, is entitled the not so great commission what has gone wrong i mean i'm not in a position to judge and to assess anybody here but really if we believe in that great and honorable cause of the great commission of this advancing the kingdom of god in our life but really have we been faithful have we truly fulfilled the great commission in our lifetime or else perhaps this is one of the stepping stones these are one of the moments that will help us that propels us to go even further and to be even stronger and better in our church mission in our church works because we know for certain the one that the one the god who calls us he called us with a firm, a sure authority. And as He bids us to go, as He charged us to go, may we be found faithful. And may His kingdom bear fruit as we continue to take roots below. And so, Ellen White says in the book of Evangelism, we are now living in the closing scenes of this world's history. Let men tremble with the sense of the responsibility of knowing the truth. The ends of the world are come and proper consideration of these things will lead all to make an entire consecration of all that they have and are to their God. This is the kind of anticipation the kind of consecration that God is longing for 
to be manifested in our church, to be revealed in our generation. So if you and I are respond to this call, let us take time, a little time today as we dive into this great commandment, this great commission, I say, I would say, as stated in Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20. Let me begin with this analogy of relay race. I know it's uh, back when I was in Sarawak, it was a big deal in the school. I'm not sure now, but I know one of the biggest game during the school year is, especially during the school games, is this relay race. I mean, we, we've seen this in other countries, but I know for, for, for the Malaysians, at least the one that I know, all right, in that time, it is, it is a big deal for the high school kids, for the elementary or primary kids, secondary kids. It's, it's a big deal. I can watch them. You know, they put all their best efforts in this ultimate game, relay race. And you cannot, you'll be very ashamed if you, if you lose this. And, and you can see that they give all they got, all their best efforts into this. And they put everything into the line just to make sure that they win this relay race. And the same, the same, the same thing we could imagine in our Great Commission. This whole idea of salvation is not yours, it's not mine. This is all God's plan. And He passed it down to us. He passed the torch, the baton to us. And as we see from one generation to another generation, as we see from God's remnant church from one generation to another generation, we see that the message still goes on. We see that the proclamation, more than just information, are being, are being given to all the world, to the end of the world. But now, right now in our time, what have we done so far? Yes, we bear fruits. Yes, we see results. Yes, we see conversions. We see souls. We see baptism numbers or targets are are increasing but really let us look into it once again because because if we are not faithful to this call perhaps we have undermined it we, we have seen how this great commission turned into grand admission where we focus so much, focus a lot on getting people in, getting people on board, you know, having, you know, getting them baptized and, and somehow we fool ourselves thinking that the work is done. The work is far from over church. God is still working and he wants to step in into our preparation, into our strategy, into our methods. But too many times we close doors. We turn this evangelistic efforts and works into our own agenda priority and we lose sight of it. Oh, perhaps we have downgraded it. We have downsized and diminished the importance of this great commission, become a department or become into certain individuals called pastors or perhaps certain gifted people we, we have made this great, great commission becomes a, a luxury, but we don't want that. We don't want that to happen. We want to see God's full glory being revealed in our lifetime through this great commission. And I believe the promise still holds true to all of us that God's presence the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit will continue to accompany God's works of salvation in our church. And that means His work will never come empty and void. The works of God will bear fruits. And now this is one of these moments 
one of the stepping stones where we can actually take a look at it again and be revived and blessed by this great commission. Church, this is not a great suggestion. The great commission is not a great suggestion. Forgive me for using these terms like grand ambition and great suggestion. But perhaps we have glorified, we have deceived ourselves by glorifying this into our own, into our own ideas. We have turned it into something else. Perhaps the great or maybe worse, this great commission has become great omissions. We talk about this a lot, but we don't really do. We don't really engage ourselves. We don't really get involved in it. We don't really participate. I mean, yeah, we can somehow participate directly or indirectly, but do we realize there's something bigger at stake than just participating in an evangelistic effort? In fact, the Bible says that God wants us to be His partakers, His sharers. The greatest gift that ever given to humanity is fellowship, one fellowship, un one fellowship and one unity with God. And so having this work of, of evangelism, we are basically, we are doing what this relay race is doing. We are passing it through. And we are passing it to the next generation as we have received it from God, from our previous generation. So now it becomes, you see that this is not, this is not a, a um, an ordinary work. This is a noble work that each of us must be must be involved in it, and we must sound out this out, sound out this cry really loud, this call really loud, that the whole church family will be awakened and we will fulfill this call. Let me just bring you this little study to put it into perspective. Why that this. Great Commission has become not so great commission. That is my sermon title today. In a recent study, 79% of unchurched said that they would be willing to engage in faith conversation if a Christian friend shared. Yet in separate but related research, only 39% of Christ followers said they have shared the gospel in the past six months. That's a 40% gap. How sad and ironic it is that the, the world, the church, the I mean, the people outside the church, they are so longing to wait and to hear from you. Faith comes from hearing. Hearing the words of God being proclaimed by the by the feet of god's believers and that includes you and me especially with this pandemic people are looking for answers and here we are the prophesied movement seven day adventist church we must rise up to this challenge and perhaps it, it is at this time of adversity our church could truly thrive Somehow this, this pandemic brings blessing to our church in our mission works, in our evangelistic efforts. This virtual service is one of it. There are so many ways to reach out. Thousands, or if not 10,000 or 100,000 people just through online service. And we know how powerful still God works in human hearts, even through this virtual service. There's limitless possibilities that we can do to reach out but now before we move on to that let's try to take a look at it again let's try to take a look at this great commission in matthew 28 and i'll begin with verse 16 to 20. then the 11 disciples went away into galilee to the mountain which jesus had appointed for them when they saw him they worshiped him but some doubted and jesus came and spoke to them saying all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth 
Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Look at that church. Such a powerful and great commission. Even with that great commission, there are still some people doubt it. They, they, they do not buy into that idea yet. They are not convinced yet. So if we see this realities around it, it's 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 part of that call. It's part of this of this grand plan of salvation. Not that there are people who will who will not be qualified already, but that the, that that the greatest cost that this this honor this commission will be accomplished and fulfilled and be done in great powers church in this great commission god gave us all the authority it's in greek meaning exousia means the power to act it means that this authority is is the is the power of god that he bestows for us to act on his will but a lot of times we find ourselves we run we run our life on empty we plan out we strategize we strategize we carefully evaluate we we synergize but yet we left out the most important part the most important element the x factor of the great commission and that is the authority of god the power of the holy spirit and maybe that's one of the reasons why that the Great Commission becomes not so great commission. Church, let me let me propose these three things to us so that we can have a refreshed or revitalized look on this great commission. First, evangelism, witnessing, this soul winning works these are these works are more a personal engagement the strength of the church relies on its individuals the vision of the church to move forward to carry the great commission relies heavily on the individual conviction if the individual church members buy into it the more power the church will hold but if we fall if 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 the individuals of the church are divided and we don't have the same perspective we will never go forward in strength church the work is personal witnessing is is first a bond, a part of a relationship with God. This comes first than duty. The fact that God calls you and me into his work is not because he just wants to commission you out of nothing, but he commissioned you in the name of his, this covenant, this blessed covenant, this relationship that he is building and establishing with us. This communion, this union with God is 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 the very source is the very motive of our evangelistic efforts we, we must realize that or else we we will downgrade and downsize the evangelistic efforts the witnessing efforts become a mere duty or activity of the church church programs we when we when we understand that this this witnessing this evangelism is uh, is a, a bond is a birthright it's 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 i would say it's a 
it's a, our personal engagement, then we will have more confidence in what God can do through us and not who we are. What needs to be done and what, what we need to have, what we need to understand is that when we take these evangelistic efforts, it is a personal work. And that takes a lot of confidence and dependence on Him. Take note how I put the two words together, confidence and dependence on God alone. We should not turn our eyes blind toward God when we are doing His work. So ironic. Many times we, we, we are at fault in doing this. And so we overlook this engagement, this empowerment with God because we did not encounter Him daily. We do not really ask His rich mercy and blessings for us. We do this on our own. We did this, we did this our ways. We did this with human wisdom and we fall hardly many times. We took it casually and we rely heavily on individuals or worse merits and achievements. We, we, we see, we see and celebrate evangelism more like an event, more like a program. And we have lost, we have lost sight. We have lost sight of what it means to witness. I believe that witnessing should be celebrated differently. I believe that witnessing is a commitment, it's a vocation, it's a calling, and that takes higher place than just priorities. Witnessing should not fall under your list of priorities. Witnessing is, is, is who you are. You, you don't do witnessing. It's, it's who you are. Witnessing is a quality of life. When I say a quality of life, it's it somehow dictates your life. It somehow penetrates and embraces every part of your life. And so, like the song says, you are my only law. Witnessing becomes our second nature. It, it's, it's part of us. And I know it doesn't come natural or supernaturally done in, in an instant. But it takes so much courage. It takes so much discipline. It takes so much of us to fulfill this great commission in our life. So first, witnessing is a personal empowerment. Evangelistic work, the success of evangelistic work is heavily placed upon every individual. And if every one of us realize this, then we have actually understand it. Jesus said in John 17 verse 18 to 19, as you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself that they also may be sanctified by the truth. Look at that. It's personal engagement. There is a power in doing this witnessing if we internalize it, if we understand it personally. Because God is, He wants and He desires to work with us. And though we do this collectively as a church, but the true essence of it relies on individual convictions. So we must know that God wants us to be sanctified individually through this witnessing effort. Church, the second thing, evangelism, witnessing, soul winning, these are heaven appointment. Yes, first we understand that this is a personal empowerment, but second, we must know that this is a heaven appointment. It means that God is the one who works things out for you and me. He's the one who supplies. He's the one who provides. He's the one who's gonna accomplish it, even if there is ahead of you unprecedented challenges like what we're having right now. 
you might be talking about financial need you might be talking about moral support you might be thinking about institutional challenges or organizational challenges or other pressures that will come along our way but we must understand that if the heaven opens the door if god opens the door nothing will shut it if god has impressed upon your mind if god has opened the the possibility to you if god has placed the burden into your life that is what we mean by heaven appointment yes he works through individuals but it's god who put that and place that importance and urgency in your hearts he planned that deeply as we continue to associate and identify ourselves around it so this is what we need to do we need to get a feel and a hang of it what it means to work with god what it means to do so winning the wages did, what it means to do exactly what he says and what it means to actually take up this call soak into it absorb ourselves into this and and we will realize that we we are actually into something bigger than our life we are actually subscribing into something something larger than we used to think because what is at stake is not the church popularity it's not the church name but it's what is being at stake here is jesus name his character this is his kingdom and his work and if we just accept the call and cooperate he will work wonders once again if we follow the heaven appointment church i believe that the witnessing efforts the public evangelism all the soul winning work should be anticipated differently we must take more caution spirituality spiritual preparations into it we can't just spend you know a trivial or little or moments of time to pray to prepare for this day there must be great and constant communion with god as to prepare for, for this great works because it's god's and it's heaven's appointment and the last one church the witnessing is a life fulfillment before this I'll, let me read this one verse to you matthew 4 verse 19 to 20 to reinforce to help us understand again that witnessing is a heaven's appointment jesus said follow me and i will make you fisher of man they, they immediately left their nets and followed him so remember as believers we are his followers as missionaries as we carry out this church mission we must follow his timing his prompting his call so that this work will bear fruits the last thing evangelism witnessing soul winning these are a truly a gift of our lifetime these are what i call the greatest life fulfillment because it is through this work god provides and gave so much blessings in our works i mean talk about the hardship persecutions that those promises in the bible those are related to this great commission to this evangelistic works god bless people who are committed in this work who are dedicated in this work and so i want us to realize that to do his will to commit our life into this great commission is the greatest life fulfillment it's what it means to be alive to exist that is our life's first and foremost ultimate purpose witnessing is meant and designed for us and i believe i'm, I'm glad that this quarterly sabbath school emphasize this it is it is part of our life it's it's designed to work in our favor if you put and invest your time in evangelism you will see how things around you work together for your good that's how we should apply romans 8 and look at this 
we have been robbed from true privilege and benefits of witnessing and God is longing to bestow and provide his providence for our church for our life if we faithfully committed to this work and so witnessing should be valued differently First, I mentioned that witnessing should be celebrated differently. It's a personal empowerment. God is looking to hearts, to individuals, to souls, to people, so that He may work and engage our hearts, our work, our life by faith. And second, it's a heaven appointment. Witnessing is a heaven appointment. It means that we are taking it not by sight, but by faith every single day because God is prompting us. He's calling us. The Spirit is moving hearts and directing and proportionating His power in our life. And right now, if we do all of this together, God is longing to show and and place his providence in our life and we will have a fulfilled a meaningful life because we follow his words because we do this great commission evangelistic witnessing soul winning works church witnessing is a delight it is not a do a deadline or a luxury like i said earlier it is more like an an entitlement is a birthright it is a natural right that we should exercise or else we might lose its privileges or benefits I mean imagine if you are a Malaysian then you have the privilege of Malaysia I know when I was still in Malaysia Malaysia has and holds one of the most powerful passports in the whole world and that was in back in 2015 if you have the Malaysian passport I know you can travel imagine that soul winning is the natural right that we should have the fact that you're traveling overseas to different countries that is the part and the benefits of being a Malaysian if you are a Christian if you understand your position if you understand the benefits that comes with it the privilege that comes with it witnessing will be effortless just like traveling who doesn't love traveling church witnessing should be effortless because it is a delight it is a joy to be in the work of god amen church let me close this with this thought Alan white reminds us that god could have reached his objective in saving sinners without our aid but in order for us to develop a character like christ we must share his work in order to enter in his into his joy the joy of seeing souls redeemed by his sacrifice we must participate in his labors for their redemption church imagine this call in john 4 verse 35 to 36 behold i say to you lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for harvest and he who reaps receives wages and gathers fruit for eternal life church behold the harvest is there whom shall god send whom shall he send our church is not a fan club a fan of jesus christ club our church is a hub our church is the focal center is the epicenter of god's glory is is the center of influence of god's goodness god's character god's mercy love and grace it is in our church god's glory being displayed throughout our life and to all the world and what a privilege we have being a christian to carry out this work to proclaim and to let our light shine into the world. Church, listen to this. John 7 verse 38, He who believes in me as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Church family, church members, my brothers and sisters in Christ, you and I, we are the living force. We are the active agent the catalyst of change that this world is in need and looking for now what 
what is your call? What is your answer? Why is this the not so great commission? Why this great commission hasn't become the not so great commission? We can restore back by God's grace and bring it forward, carry on in this generation, this this prophetic movement, this this prophetic messages that we have, that we carry, that we hold in our torch, so that God's name will be glorified. The kingdom of God will be expanded and will be advanced through all of you if we take up His authority in our life. And the Great Commission will remain the great call, the noblest, the ultimate goal of our life. May God bless all of us.